Picture this, two guys trapped in the South Charleston Public Library. One guy loves movies, the other, well, he'd rather be watching reality TV. Can they survive each other's films? Find out on Real Opposites, a library podcast about movies. Hosted by Josh and Aaron from the South Charleston Public Library. Hey guys, and welcome to a special episode of Real Opposites called Lil Opposites. I'm Aaron. I'm Josh. And today we have a special guest with us. My name is Colton. I'm a team volunteer at South Charleston Library. All right. And Josh and Colton are going to discuss Labyrinth. I did not watch it because, you know, I don't I don't watch movies. So mainly it's going to be them discussing it. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe, Josh, if you could tell us a little bit about Labyrinth, and then we'll go to Colton. Okay. Labyrinth is a... 1986 film from Jim Henson and George Lucas fantasy starring Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie and a lot and a lot of puppets. Um, I I think it still holds up and it's kind of a timeless little film. I used to watch it a lot when I was a kid and I still really enjoy it aside from the what what is the what are they called the I ones that know are what they're called, but they're the ones that like terrifying. this like they take all their body parts off and I don't know the song doesn't work this the effects don't work this is a children's movie it, it is. is isn't there like a lot of death or something in it or is that a different no, movie no there's is not a lot like of bridge death. to terabeth I mean, there's like some some mildly creepy okay. imagery I didn't know but it was a kid's movie. That, you might that, be thinking Pan's Labyrinth, which is different. That's it. That's yeah, a that's horror a movie. I've like also not seen that by, one. Uh, Guillermo del Toro. Oh, that you would probably, probably, like probably like what that. I'm talking about. I think you'd like Labyrinth, too, if you ever sat down and watched it. Yeah, one day. But it's an awesome flick. Great music. Great, great puppeteering and effects. There's just like every scene is just full of so much more imagination than most movies have, you know, in, in their whole runtime. So, Well, that... It sounds neat. I will watch it eventually one yeah. day. All right, Colton. So what did you think? You watched it today. What was your opinion? My opinion, it was okay. It was sad, and then it was funny, and then it was, yeah. So it ran the gamut of emotions for you. Yeah. What, what was sad about it? Like, when she lost the baby. Oh, yeah. It's a bummer. And then whenever she tried to... <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> That's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, she did ask for him to be taken away That's by the oh. goblin Please, king. Please, goblin t- king, take away this baby. Oh, well. She just didn't think it would actually happen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. Guys. Well, and you're a little brother, right? <sighs> I'm a big brother. You're, I'm a big brother? Yeah. So how would you feel if one of your older siblings had you taken away or... You accidentally gave away one of your younger siblings. Well, I guess they're gone. <laughs> oh, wow. so you're not. You're not going on the Holden. adventure in the labyrinth wow. to get them back. No. They can find. Like, they can, oh well. They can, Rosie on along. <laughs> they can find a way back to the the, the house. Like mm-hmm. I don't care. Wow. Holden. They were taken to a magical realm in this situation. Well, they're gonna have to figure out how to get back. I mean, they like never go on a trip with you ever. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so <laughs> all right well how about a favorite part did you have a favorite part of the movie whenever she went back in the room and said it was a dream mm-hmm. like at the end yeah yeah and or then in the, or in the whenever middle. whenever like the garbage goblin oh, the garbage lady came uh giving all of her stuff to the girl yeah mm-hmm. i was, love that it was, part it was the best part it's all about it's like the whole movie's set up to where it's her like realizing what's really important you know and like all the the like the hoarding lady all these little trinkets that you think are so important when you're a kid are not important you know i really like that what would be something that the garbage lady would bring you (sighs) she'll probably bring me my phone your phone (laughs) (laughs) or what's a toy that you've lost like you don't have anymore i don't play with toys when you were little i know (laughs) but like when you were little Okay, I'm not even going to lie. When I was little, I used to play with Barbies. Oh, Barbies. Oh, okay. Like the Ken and, yeah. Ken and yeah. Barbie. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. And I played Barbies with my sister all the time. But sometimes I would also play with my wrestling toys in her Barbie house. So Barbie <laughs> would be like cooking dinner and my wrestlers would be on the balcony Barbie. throwing each other off. Barbie's getting pinned by Macho Man. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Tap out. 
Hey, but we played Step together. Slim Jim. Tap it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, a fun fact, I don't even know what this scene is, but in the helping hand scene, over 100 pairs of latex hands were made. I thought that well, was kind of cool. It's yeah. a lot of latex hands. Yeah. It would kind of be disgusting, like, feeling all that on your body. Yeah, it yeah it's creepy. Right? Yeah. It's creepy. Did any part of the movie freak you out a little bit? Did you think anything was scary? That baby lynch person. What? I don't know if it was a boy or a girl. What? Like the big man right there. Oh, oh David uh, Bowie? David yeah. Bowie. Jareth? Yes. Like, I don't know if it was a boy or a girl. Yeah, that's David Bowie. He's a, he's, he's a goblin. I don't yeah. know that they... I don't know they ever really tell us that either. But he is a king, so I assume he's a boy. Yeah. But, yeah... I feel like his 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 general demeanor is super creepy over the whole movie, but it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, I don't. Once again, of course, I didn't watch it, so I don't know who Hoggle is. But I just read that uh, the w- one of the reasons why Hoggle is always making groaning noises between his their lines um, was to keep his, the mouth open as much as possible, so the actress inside could <laughs> see out. <laughs> so I guess, which is kind of a neat. A neat way to do it. They yeah. just added a groaning so it made sense for the mouth to be open yeah. all the time. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's uh, Ludo, the big, uh, yeah, because uh, I mean, they're puppets. Like they're full, Looks like, like a big animatronic. gorilla. The big yeah. Ludo, the big gorilla, is he's so big. He had one guy inside of him and the guy couldn't see. So me and Josh learned while we were watching the movie that they had a little uh, camera in his one of his horns, and he had a little TV in inside of Ludo. Yeah, so it's like strapped to his, his stomach, so he would be like this, looking down, walking, and everything. So that he could see. That's how that's, that's how movies crazy. used to be made. What do you think of all the puppets? Creepy. 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 Weird. Creepier than like CG puppets no. or CG creatures. They're like they're weird. Like they were like the puppets that were mad at her. They kept like coming at her, and it was like. When she hit him in the head, it was funny. <laughs> like the little goblin guys? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever. Uh, oh, when she hits him and then they like, their little stick hits, like bites the other one in the butt and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like and then little. another part uh, where whenever she went in the house and all the goblins tried to come into the house by the windows and stuff, she kept hitting him with glass. Mm-hmm. She was like, Ur! For food. <laughs> yeah. Throwing food at him. What did you think of like all the like the MC Escher like the stairs yeah, and everything? Yeah, like a weird room where they like walk up. Like at the end, yeah, it was stairs. weird. It uh, it was confusing. Yeah, it's really that's supposed to be like that's supposed to be like so she's the the movie gets like more and more a little darker as it goes on and more complex and those are like she gets she it's like uh, she's becoming an adult like slowly throughout the movie and so like that's sort of a visual representation of how complex adulthood can get you know. It's rough, these... man. Stay young yes. yeah. forever. Well, that's what the movie's telling you not to do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but to remember, like, like at the end of the movie when, you know, she's like, I'll need you because you, you'll need those stories that you grew up on. True. You know, that mean something to you later in life. And you'll need them to remind you to, like, you know, to, I always keep that little bit of child child childlike quality inside of you, you know. There's a... um. I mean, that's one of the things that Jareth says to her, right? Like, you say that's not fair a lot. Mm -hmm. What must your frame of reference be? Yeah. And it's, like, funny when you're a kid and you don't, I mean, not some kids have a lot to worry about. Yeah. But kids don't always have, I mean, she is from a, like, you know, pretty good family life and all this stuff. And it's, like, she keeps, you know, kind of being petulant about, like, this isn't fair. And the Goblin King is, like, What's not, your what's frame of exactly. reference? I'll like, show you not fair. Yeah, like when you're <laughs> when you're like your age, Colton, like everything's like the slightest little thing can be like, oh, it's not fair. Life's not fair. And it's just yes. like it's a small crumble in the big, the big Wait till you're big an picture. adult and life's really not fair. Not trying to be a downer <laughs> here. Um, We're doing this podcast specifically adult. to just scare Colton. Probably uh, <laughs> being a <laughs> So okay. it's not all bad. It's pretty cool. It's all right. Yeah, there's a lot of good parts. Yeah. You can, you can, the the one of the best things about being an adult is when you want something, you can just go get it. Yeah. The downside is when you want something, you can just go get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't have any money. And then all of a sudden money's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so the puppets in 
Labyrinth were Jim Henson puppets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all of his puppeteers, and he directed the film. Well, that's neat. Yeah, I, I saw that uh, Hoggle once again was voiced by his son. Yeah, by okay, Jim Henson's yeah. son. I thought that was cool, Brian Henson. Yeah. yeah. Colton, after watching the movie, if there was anything you could change or add to the movie, is there something you would add? I would change something. Like, whenever they were, like, taking the heads off of the gauntlets, yeah. you could see the green screen. Yes. Yeah. And it's it was cool. like... Well, you got to remember, this is 1986, yeah. so green screen. This screen's is before not, I was born. This is not the best. Yeah, this movie's oh. older than him. Okay, first of all, don't look at me and then say, <laughs> oh, it's old. <laughs> but I'm still older than the movie, so what does that say? Oh, yeah, that he's real old. <laughs> So like, uh, so the the bird in the opening sequence, the owl, like in the titles, of, is yeah. the very first or one of the very first fully computer generated animals yeah. ever. And oh, that's so neat. Like, that's crazy. It's the only one of the one of the very first things. So all of the computer generated stuff is super early. That said, it does look bad. Right. Some of the yeah, spots. They... Though I don't think at the time you would have noticed as much because it would just well, be probably like, not. Well, yeah. like like the opening titles are kind of supposed to be. Not like the actual owl, you know what I mean? Like I think, maybe, fantastical, maybe because the owl at the end, like you were calling the owl at the end when it's flying away, that's a real owl that they're just yeah. compositing in, yeah. and they're oh. having to frame by frame composite. Oh wow, into that's the, rough into the, the actual shot. You could but also yeah. see the green screen there. Yeah, you can. Well, you can see the mat. Yeah, you can always see the mat lines. There's a. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what they used to have to do, Colton. Is like the the owl, and then the guys that take their heads off and everything. So like every frame. They're painting around that to put them into the frame to shoot them against the background. That's how that works. That's it's very labor intensive. It's crazy. Yeah. Movies. Oh, another another funny part was whenever she was in the maze and she finally found like the way out. Uh huh. Whenever he wouldn't open his mouth to put the thing in so she can't knock. Yeah. And then that's finally when she got the door open and she fell in the hands. Yeah. Is that the scene of a hundred hands? Yes. 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 Helping hands or helping hands, yeah. Those are the latex hands. Oh, gross. (laughs) Disgusting. Uh, That's what I was going to say. Like, hopefully she wasn't allergic. Um, What was your favorite creature? Probably the gorilla. You like Ludo? Ludo, Ludo, yeah. Ludo. I still like. Maybe Toby. Oh, the baby. The baby. (laughs) So, Uh, the creature. Funny, <laughs> I mean, most so, babies are creatures, but funny enough, baby. Mm-hmm. Now I, I lost my place. No, yeah, <laughs> it was a puppet. The baby's name was originally going to be Freddy, but they had to change it because the um, infant that played Toby would only react to its own name. Oh, okay. <laughs> so its real name was Toby, and that was the only way it would react. Child so they had to change so it. Difficult. <laughs> also, it was a real baby. Yes, it was a real it baby. Was. I, Such a creature. Bad, bad. Only bad things happen to children named Toby in in movies. <laughs> What's Maybe your favorite other... part of the movie? What's my favorite part of the movie? Ludo's my favorite character, also. But I probably like. I just really like the ending when she's like finally remembers her line. It's not as climatic as it could be if. We were doing like better, and I really love. Um, but I also really love all of the musical numbers that feature the Goblin King that have yeah. like all of the Bowie numbers, like the the dance magic dance, mm-hmm. and the oh, and I like the the it's creepy as it is. The ballroom scene is really cool. Yeah, like I love the mask that. and stuff are crazy. That's very beautiful and well done. It is super creepy though. Josh, yeah. do you have a favorite? You have a favorite um, I kind of like, I like Ludo a lot, but I like, um, I forget his name, the little dog. Didmus. That rides, Didymus. Sir Didymus. And oh, what's the kid, what's the, the dog's name? Ambrosius. Ambrosius. <laughs> I just love, I, I love that. I've always loved that. He's been my favorite character. Um, <laughs> if you don't turn around right now, I'll never feed you again. <laughs> it's like, it's I'll, like a car screeching sound effect. I like that, the do- like the, that Ambrosius is also a puppet when it's like trying, when it has to act. Yes. It's really cute um but i like the last scene when she's in her um in her bedroom at the end and yeah. sees the the puppet the you know the goblins Boy, and stuff in the mirror. Sarah. yeah it's really it's really endearing <laughs> they uh, all I was had the party. it was creepy whenever she broke the glass and everybody just lied down like yeah. died yeah yeah it's intense it's creepy creepy it's creepy. It's a good movie. It's all about dreams and growing up and yeah. all that kind of stuff. It feels like a very much like Peter Pan. I feel like yeah, totally. it definitely takes its cues yeah. from... Yeah, y'all's description so far definitely Peter makes Pan. me think of Peter Pan. 
and not well, some creepy puppet well, movie. Well, it's about a girl who goes to a fantasy land that, you know, is where she learns about, I don't know, what's going to be expected of her and what's she's oh. having to put behind her in her childhood and to grow up and oh. learns, you know. Has yeah. to deal with a man child who doesn't yeah. understand. Well, so veracity. far, it's just reminded me of um, was it Tells from the Hood? <laughs> that one, the, the one show I was talking about that day with the what? puppets that come to life. Remember that movie? Tales from the Hood? Yeah. Is that it? The puppets come to what life. What happens? The puppets come to life and murder people. Oh. oh. I think there is a. There is a short yeah. Tales okay. from the Hood where that yeah. does happen. Yeah. Um, it makes me think of that. And then um, there was something else that was making. We want to reiterate: Aaron did not watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, I've not seen that. That wasn't um, painfully obvious. <laughs> by, by that illusion there. So they almost one of the people up for Bowie's spot was Michael Jackson. That would have well, gone. Well. That, that would been good too. I don't know. I think it could have been interesting. Mm, I would prefer Bowie. I'm no. glad we got Bowie. I don't really know much about him either. But. I think Bowie. You need to. Bowie's a better actor. Yeah. Like he had, okay. Because Bowie had been he had been acting since the seventies. Like pretty oh. much after he became a big musical star, he started mm-hmm. acting. He was in. Those eyebrows um, are crazy though, man. <laughs> uh, like Mary, was it Merry Christmas, Mister? John? I forget. It's like a war movie where he's like an in internment camp and stuff. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, but he had been acting. He had more experience in front of a camera, like as far mm-hmm. as like being in a feature film. And... He was good stage. Well, wasn't there a movie yeah. where Michael Jackson was like the son or something? Oh. the... The Wiz, yeah, or, that's what okay. I mean. I think <laughs> like uh, there's, he wasn't in many films. So uh, The Wiz. <laughs> While we were talking about Peter Pan, uh, whenever the goblin was killing the fairies, mm-hmm. counting. Oh, you mean Hoggle? Fifty-seven. Yeah, 58, I love that whole part. Fifty-nine, sixty. I love that he he like shoots him with whatever like thing that out of his little <laughs> his spray, and then he just kicks dirt on him. Like Roundup. Afterwards. <laughs> she, well, so like I I thought that was kind of neat because she's like, oh, I thought they'd do something nice, and he's like, no, no, they they're fairies, her. they bite, uh, and that's like that draws from like a bunch of like old fairy tales. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know this, Colton. I'm gonna tell you that old fairy tales were traditionally pretty dark, yeah. and the fairy would try to trick you into coming with them so that then they could eat you. Yeah. And, and like yeah. old school yeah. fairy tales, everything is basically just trying to eat you. Everything's trying to kill you. Yeah. In old fairy tales. It's... It was to keep children out of the woods. Yeah. And it's yeah. like a... Where know. they could die. Then. Yeah. Because, I mean, you think, like, this is like old time. There are wolves. There are Close bears. people and bears. Vampires. What no, was that? <laughs> there are like berries you could say, eat that could uh, kill you. Coyotes. coyotes. Coyotes, exactly. It's so, you know, and people didn't live in as big a cities and there weren't as many people. So there were more animals and more things to be afraid of in the woods. And, yeah. you know, so a lot of fairy tales are just pretty much listen to your parents, stay out of the woods or you will be eaten. You will die. By fairy. She'll be stolen by the fae folk and they will <laughs> either eat you or keep you forever. Yeah. Those are your choices. Word. Word. Life was hard back yeah. in the day. I should have listened to you and not go in the woods. <laughs> Occasionally. It's late, Colin. We're tired. I can tell. In it's the Friday. Day. It's Friday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the sigh of... Friday at 530. The middle school child. And we have a uh, spring break. Oh, are you so, excited? Yeah. 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 Oh, to, next week? Yeah. It's spring break? Just oh, coming up. Oh, nice. You got a so dance magic dance in the next week. I know. We'll miss what? You guys. A dance magic dance in the next week. <laughs> dance magic. <laughs> well, Colton. Did you have a favorite song, Colton? Did you like any of the songs in the movie? I didn't know the names of them, but I liked. Let me think of the words. You can just sing it to us. You can just sing it to us. Yeah, but I don't know the words. It's like. Da, 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 da. What happens in that scene? Yes. <sighs> People sing. Mm-hmm. I think it was. Whenever they were taking the heads off. Oh. Oh. That's a weird song. Yeah. I don't know. I always like the the opening, I guess, to the dance with the like you remind me of the babe. What babe? Babe with the what babe? Babe with the power. <laughs> the power of voodoo. Who do you what? <laughs> do what? What about you, Josh? Babe. <laughs> what? What song do you like? Um I don't know the name of the song, but I like the song that's accompanying the scene with like all the stairs. Mm-hmm. The MC Escher thing at the end. I like that. MC Escher's a famous artist. You'll probably study him in school if you haven't already. He was famous for his tessellations. It's where you have like one drawing and then you rotate it and it fits into the next part of the drawing. 
No. Have you seen those? No. I might have a book. Oh, here. Actually, yeah. I even have. Yeah, there you go. There. MC Escher. Um, it looks like a C. Also, weirdly, one of his famous ones is Hand with Reflecting Globe, which is oh, what yeah. Gareth. Or what Jareth? So Gary's neat little out. thing. Whenever he's doing that, like with the with the globe, the, the globes. So you know, there's that one shot of him like at the window sill, and he's like blowing them out into the yeah. into the air. So what's happening is like he's sitting there, and some other guy's got his hand that's like coming up under his jacket, and they're doing that. Cause <laughs> okay. Because David, David Bowie can't do that. So there's just why can't he do it? Because it's difficult, he, and you have to train for years to know how to do that. Oh, like, it's not like stupid. simple stuff. He's like yeah. juggling. Yeah, oh, it's like okay. three, there's like three. I thought three it was going to be like he has a. Yeah, there's like three glass globes that he's just like. Oh. Okay. And then he goes like this, and they all move like it's really. And then he blows. He's like he picks one and a. And then it, you know. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. Anytime you see him doing. Is that, that the one of the scenes? It looks like one of the. Yeah, yeah that's like the end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So they're very inspired by. That's what I mean. There's so much like just beautiful like design and go. architecture and costume design. It's just so imaginative, the entire That's film. Crazy. So, Colton, overall, what did you think of this movie? If you had to give it a rating out of 10. Some of it was confusing. Right, yeah. Like the end. What was confusing? Uh, The stairs. Well, yeah. Like, it's... it confused me how he was going from the bottom to the top. Well, magic. yeah. The, the whole... Magic. magic. Yeah, magic. It's supposed to be confusing. Uh, my rating would probably be, like, an 8.5 out of 10. Nice. Oh, nice. That's, That's pretty, pretty high. high. So, you would definitely recommend it to someone yeah. like me, because yeah. like I haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I guess that... Brings us to the end of Lil Opposites, Lil. a special presentation of Real Opposites. By Colton. <laughs> With Colton. With, With Colton. Colton. With yeah, so until... In, in case you didn't know, Colton has been doing all of our voices this entire time. <laughs> it, yeah. It's just Colton. It's <laughs> just Colton. We're all Colton. Yeah. We're all Rich Colton. Little of his time. <laughs> I could do every voice. Oh, yeah? You do you Do your best. Everybody, right now, let's hear okay, it. Okay, here's Toby. Okay, let's hear <laughs> That's close. Pretty close. <laughs> not bad. Okay, I'm going to do Josh. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha, it's not bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> not bad. Now I'm going to do Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. He lost too much. <laughs> Just... With Aaron, you also have to throw in a... Meow. Everyone's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a great way to end this uh, special presentation of Little Opposites. So until next time, I'm Aaron. I'm Josh. And this is The Real Opposites. <laughs>